Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Love of Fighting Podcast. Um, uh, it's your host, Asha. As always, we are joined by my friend, my best friend, Ollie Stanley. Ollie, how are you doing? How was your day? It's been all right, mate. How about yours? Um, I'm, I actually had a decent day, to be honest. Um, I had a pretty funny interaction with a cat crackhead this morning at the at the job, at the work, uh, <laughs> this guy comes in, uh, crackhead, like, he's like, you, like, there are a lot of people that are like crackheads, and you can't tell, but there are a lot of people that are crackheads, and you can't tell from like miles away. One of those guys, they come in, he is looking for straw, you know, straw, they use it to smoke crack, like, sell it, um, and in our store, we sell straws, and he, this guy comes in, and um, he looks high. He looks high as fuck. He comes in, he's like, he he gives me his card, so I'm going to swipe in, and, you know, he's going to pay. And, and for some reason, he's like, in, he's, a, he's insisting, like, I want to swipe the card. I want to swipe the card. Like, you know, when you're a little kid, you want to do all this stuff? It makes you look like a grown-up. Um, mm-hmm. And he's like, let me swipe the ca- let me swipe the car. I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna do it myself. I'm like, all right, go, all right, man, go for it. And he's like, trying to put the card into my fucking TV. He's like, trying to grab my phone. He thinks that's the fucking place where you gotta put the card in. I'm like, dude, you're high as fuck. Just don't pay. Just go out. I gave him stuff for free, and he was like, thank you, man. Thank you so much. I'm like, dude. Just go out. Do, and don't come here when you're fucking high. You know, the, and that place, it's a, it's a pretty old neighborhood. You know, where, that's where my dad, dad started, and that's his old shop. Uh, so I, I'm keeping the things going, you know. And I ha- I actually talked to crackheads like 20 times a day, and this was this one was really funny. Yeah. So I, it's not funny when I tell a story. Like, when you're in there, it looks funny, and... The guy, he he comes in. He's wearing a shirt, like a, a very formal shirt, like a white shirt, and a, really the shirt looked really good. And he's wearing a short. Uh, it looks like he just took a piss and it went back the alley. It was a big dump, like someone took a shit. I think it was him. I mean, crackheads, man, they're funny and they're dangerous. And- at the same time, and we can't do nothing about it. Yeah, school was fun. You know, like every it's every day, shit, man. Nothing too important to talk about. Yeah, well, yeah, every, it's every day, shit. We got a lot of good news today, to be honest. Mm, Kevin Holland, this guy, uh, after getting knocked out and choked out in the same fight, we're gonna go over it later. Um, he goes out and acts like a superhero. Uh, I believe he say he uh, uh, he took down a thief trying to steal someone's car. Uh, you heard about it? Yeah, he chased them for a couple of miles. I mean, let let me tell you something, man. If you are a fighter and you see a thief, you kind of like feel like you're a superhero. I mean, I'm not a fighter. I, I'm I've had had fights, but I don't claim to be a fighter, but when I see this stuff happening, I feel like I'm Superman. I don't know, I just want to go in there and help people. Don't you feel like that when you, like, see that stuff, that shit happening like that? I feel like I'm a superhero when this happens. I don't want to, all I want to, all I want from God is to, you know, that guy, I'm, I just hope that that guy doesn't have a gun. Or a knife. I just hope that he's unarmed so I can beat the crap out of him. I just hope that. I just hope that I don't run into an armed crackhead. That's what I want. So yeah, thank and Kevin Holland. And you know, I love the guy. And what do you think, think about his performance yesterday? Like, yesterday? It was an even fight, to be fair to him. It was equal. Striking, equal. His grappling looks so improved. 
yeah. stuffed four out of five takedowns. And the one he didn't stuff, he got straight back up. Yeah, I mean, Hendricks then, he, he went to Hendricks then, and he looked, he looked great, and, you know, he was talking to DC, he was like, a little bit better, a little bit better, huh? And I get it, I mean, the guy, he worked his ass off, and, you know, that was a, that was a really unfortunate thing to happen, and, we have to, uh, we have to remember, he, yeah. we don't know how he would have done against Brunson or Vittori with the improved wrestling. Uh, I mean, if you look at the, uh, with Tory fight, he was piecing off with Tory like, on the feet. He was doing great on the feet. The takedowns were the problems, right? If you watch the, if you remember that fight, he was doing great on the feet. He was, you know, doing damage on the feet. He, his striking is always sharp, you know. I think uh, he's one of those, you know. I think he's he's uh, one of the dan- most dangerous guys to Israel Adesanya. I, I actually believe that, but uh, his Ground game looked bad, and you know he improved it after the Vittori fight. He went to the gym, he worked on it day and night, and you know that's what you get from you know training hard. He he looked great. His grappling looked really great. You know the takedown defense was on point. His the striking the striking was pretty even, I would say. But that headbutt, man, that headbutt, that was that was brutal. Do you see him? He was on his Instagram stories and he showed lip where he got headbutted and it was all busted up. His what? Lip. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a headbutt, man. You know, the skull is the hardest bone in your body. Um, I think, I don't know, that's, I don't, I'm not pretty sure, but I think the skull is the hardest part in your body. It doesn't matter. It's harder than your knuckle. It's harder to break a knuckle than a skull call so let me tell you something it's if that was the first time kevin holland has been knocked down in his career and that was you know that was the worst headbutt i've seen in my life and i've seen pretty bad ones and you know mm-hmm. kevin was out and i thought he went out with a punch because you know it happened no, so I knew, fast i, knew I mean i knew it i knew it i knew the head what was at the moment like i saw it happen kevin went down and i was like oh shit it. And then I replayed it in my mind, and I was like, "Yeah, that's a headbutt." And you know, Kevin really didn't recover from that. You know, you don't recover from a shit like that, man. You know, you get you got that head was on his that head, like got him clean on the chin. And you know, when you get when you hit someone clean on the chin, they go out. It doesn't matter who you are, how big you are, how tough you are, you're going out. And, you know, that was unfortunate. And, you know, thank you to Sean Shelby and damn, Herb Dean. Herb Dean saved us. Yeah, Herb Dean, Sean Shelby, because, you know, Mergliata, he wanted to call a submission for Kyle Dawkins, which I think it would be bad. Kevin Holland, he didn't care. He he said, as long as I'm concerned, he knocked me out and choked me out in the same fight. And, you know, he doesn't care because he's, he's a fighter, man. He... He tapped out, and if it, if, that, if it wasn't for that headbutt, Kevin Holland would have lost. But, hey, if it wasn't for that headbutt, Kevin Holland wouldn't have ended up in that submission. So, yeah, that, mm-hmm. thank you to Herb Dean and Sean Shelby for convincing Liara, because he wasn't sure about it either. You know, he told uh, Herb told him, if you are not sure, it can't be a no contest, because that headbutt, that got him, you know, to go down. So yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just hope that Kevin is fine and you know Kyle, Kyle Dawkins, um, he can work his way, he can work his way back up and you know he he yeah, wants to run it back. I I'm, I I think they should have a rematch. They are. I mean, they, they said in the Oakland we're running back. Yeah, they said that we're, they're gonna run it back. I hope I hope they run it back, man. I, that's a great fight. The stand up look amazing. The grab. The grappling, Kevin looked great, and you know I I want to see it run back. Doesn't matter, you know. But Eric Anders and uh, Darren Stewart, they they run it back. You know, Eric had uh, you remember that fight? Eric Anders, Darren yeah. Stewart, yeah, the was... first one. Eric was on our podcast a couple episodes ago. Um, yeah, 
he hit him with illegal knees and they ran it back. You know, that's when that happens, you should run it back. You who did you predict? Who did you predict to win that um the um rematch? Anders or Stewart? Um, I was. I think I was going with Stewart. Yes, I don't sir. know. I have to check my Instagram. And Instagram's down. I don't know what's going on with that. But Instagram is down. Instagram and WhatsApp is down. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. And Facebook, it's something going on. There's something going on. I hope it's not a zombie apocalypse. I hope it's not a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, I better come back because I need a post today. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I just hope it's nothing too serious. Because, you know, we work with Instagram. And basically, our job is in is Instagram. You know, we use Instagram to bring in guests. And I hope it comes back up. I mean, we need Instagram. And, and you know, I just hope that it's not, a zombie apocalypse is not happening. No, it's you happened know, before. It's happened this year. Do you know no, what the... Um, Nah, it's tweaking. Uh, don't bring that not nah, tweaking thing back. Please. <laughs> don't bring that up. I woke up one morning and it's like all over the comments. Nah, he tweaking. Nah, he tweaking. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, well. it's... Yeah, because it's, it's happening like a little clock. All time. So, I Is it coming back? Through. Is it supposed to come back? Did they say it's coming back? What night we can stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, well, listen, hey, I think, I think, um, there, there's, there are problems going on like around the world. I'm sure, not sure. And I, like I said, uh, I just hope that it's not a zombie apocalypse. I just hope that it's not a zombie apocalypse. Dude, stop it, please. <laughs> Stop. Anyway. Yeah. Move, move on from that topic. Yeah. Uh, main event. We slap on Mackenzie Duren's fight this weekend. Yeah. Mackenzie Duren. Um, let's let's talk about the main event, and then we'll talk about the upcoming card. Because uh, I I got a lot of I got a lot to say about the main event. To be honest, I got a lot to say about the main event. I'm a little bit concerned about Johnny Walker guy. I mean, his chin looked great. He, he took that shot like it was nothing. His chin looked great. Like it wasn't like his last fights, his last couple fights. But hey, look, um, Johnny Walker. Uh, he's training with. You know, John Cavanaugh, and I've got a lot of respect for John Cavanaugh, but I don't know what's going on with John. I don't know what's, what's up with John. Cause, you know, with, with the port, let's start with the, with, this is when I noticed this thing with, uh, with the second Poirier fight. With the second Poirier fight. Let's start with that. Um, do you know that Connor is fighting a Southpaw? Mixed martial artist who is who's got the fight IQ, who's got the ground game, and he, he I think, you know his his physique he's bigger than Connor. He probably probably weighs more than Connor. He's heavier than Connor, and you know Connor he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao, and he's fighting in MMA against Dustin Poirier. He Connor comes out and says that. Cam was 70% boxing. First of all, uh, I want to say this to John Cavanaugh. As a coach, I believe you should stop Connor from doing that. You know, I mean, that's a mixed martial arts competi- competi- uh, com- ah, fuck. Uh, competi- I can't even say the word. Say it for me, please. It's well, competition. Competition, yeah. Fuck it. I don't know what the fuck's going on with me. It's because of the fucking vaccine. So, Listen, you know that's a mixed, you know, mixed martial arts fight, and you know, you Connor wants to fight Manny Pacquiao. If you want to fight Manny Pacquiao, you, you should fight Manny Pacquiao. You don't fight Dustin Poirier and train for Manny Pacquiao. That's not how it works. Manny is a five foot two boxer. Dustin Poirier is your 
height. He's heavier than you. And this is a mixed martial arts bout. And you know, you shouldn't let him to train for Manny Pacquiao when he's fighting Dustin Poirier. Then you, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's messed up. And then you move on to the fight. First round ends. Connor takes a shit ton of low calf kicks. And you don't talk, talk about the low calf kicks to Connor. You don't tell him, hey, do something about it. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You gotta switch, switch your stance. You gotta go orthodox. You gotta, you know, go light on your front leg. You should, you gotta do all of that. You don't tell him anything about it. You just tell him to keep your hands up. And you know, the second fight, if you remember, Poirier was scared of Connor. He was fighting afraid. Right? You remember that. He was backing up all the time. He was, he was, was, you know, Connor was landing better shots in the second fight. Because Dustin wasn't confident. Dustin was confident. Dustin is always confident. Every fighter is confident that he's going to win. Win or lose, doesn't matter. When you go in the cage, you're confident. But he was concerned about Connor's power. And, you know, Connor's power came from, you know, that karate stance, bouncing around, switching the legs, you know, mixing things up with the legs and... Weird angle shots, you know, and John took all of that away from Connor, turned him into a stock and, you know, a flat footed boxer who is heavy on the lead leg and is taking heavy shots. And you don't tell him what to do about those shots. You know, it's messed up. And you move on to the next fight that. Poirier fight. I think they did good in preparations. You know, Connor was doing great on the feet. Um, you know, but Poirier, what they didn't expect Poirier to be uh, confident as fuck. You know, did you do you remember, remember how poor, how confident Poirier was in the in the trilogy? Yeah, he was taking shots like it was nothing. He was taking heavy up kicks, heavy elbows like it's nothing and listen, when you got a stress fracture in your leg, you have to pull out I would pull out, I have stress fractures right now and I'm not training at all I'm going to the gym I'm hitting pads I'm coming out, I'm not doing anything else till this leg heals and I think they should have pulled out from the trilogy fight with Poirier he should have pulled out, man. But hey, that's Connor. He doesn't bitch out from a fight. And if you pull out, I'm not saying if you pull out, you're a bitch. You are a smart fighter, you know. That's your career. That's your future. But, you know, Connor didn't pull out in the, uh, you know, the Mendes fight. He didn't pull out in the Poirier fight, and that cost him. But, you know, John, I don't know what's going on with him, but he is. You know, I don't know what's going on with him, man. You know, he told Johnny Walker that he was winning the fight. It was, yeah, it was acting like he, he won every round 10-7. Yeah. And you and listen, guys, we are not hating John Kavanaugh. You know, all he all he agrees with me. All he's Irish. All he's Irish. He doesn't care. He knows that John Kavanaugh is making mistakes. Isn't that right, Ollie? Yeah. <clears throat> Go on, talk a little bit. I'm drinking a little bit of water, Mike. I got a sore right. throat. Um, yeah, rant about John Kavanaugh. Yeah. I'm not going to let this go. He's changed. Oh, hang on. He's changed Johnny Walker from a... From a... Explosive fighter into a, a um, patient fighter. Two patient. patient point fighter. Yeah, two Not patient. like Nganu. Just Not like Nganu. Listen, Nganu, Nganu, listen, Nganu was still, he was patient, but he was entertaining. Johnny Walker, they were throwing like, he was throwing like nine shots each round for five minutes. 
Imagine you're in there with a guy who's trying to take your head off, and you go on the It definitely five, six, was 48, 47. It was 48, 47, because Johnny won the first round and the third round. And, you know, Santos, uh, congratulations to Thiago. You know, he snapped the losing streak. He's back in the winning, on the winning side. But, you know, Johnny, he could have done better. He could have done better. Yeah. His chin, it looked it look amazing, right? You, yeah. Do you remember that shot, the big shot? Yeah, round five. Round five, that shot put away Jan Bohovic, the champion. That shot put away Jan Bohovic and many other people. And Johnny Walker, his last couple of fights that he lost, he was knocked out. He was knocked out by Corey Anderson in wrestling. All right. I, I'm going to sum up Tiago's last four fights, was it? So, John Jones, good fight. Yeah. He, very close. close, but his, both his knees blew out. Yeah. He, he had a layoff reconstructing his leg. Glover to yeah. Sarah. He done good against Glover. He did good, yeah, he did good, but, you know, that's Glover's Glover just another to share. To see. Glover's a, you know, he's, a, he's what I like to call an old lion. He's an old lion. You know, yeah. he he was hurt. He was hurt badly, but he took the fight to the ground and submitted the other. And that's exactly. one and thing. You know, you know, Glover Teixeira was getting pieced up by Anthony Smith. And still came out on top. Still won, won the Anthony fight. Anthony gassed himself. Anthony uh, gassed End around two, I think, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And his teeth were falling out. Because Glover hits so hard. Glover hits hard. So does Anthony Smith. Yeah, I mean... Like, Anthony Smith yeah. throwing those one-twos were... Like, this what, um, who's a good coach? Who trains Justin Gaethje? Um, um, Trevor Whitman. Whitman. That guy like, amazing. He was saying, Anthony was throwing everything he got at Glover. He just needed to take a bit off, like... Trevor said to Justin that Tony, he said, "You're throwing a hundred percent, throw at seventy percent. You yeah. you just just tag him, not try and kill him." Because you know he's saying that to Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, he's one of the most pow- one of the most powerful lightweights. You've seen his hands; he can knock you out with one shot. Guess and, you know, he said. Guess, I was watching this interview Justin Poirier did. He said Connor. It's harder than Gaethje. Because Connor, listen, uh, I'll get to that later. Look, this fight is between Justin Gaethje, a hard hitting lightweight, doesn't have the greatest cardio. He's got the championship level experience. He can go five rounds, but he doesn't have a better cardio than Tony Ferguson. And when you try to put Tony Ferguson away, uh, let me tell you something, man. You're not going to put Tony Ferguson away. You're not going to knock him out cold. You're not going to knock him out cold. He finished him. He TKO'd him. But was Tony out? Was no. Tony out cold? No. So that would be He didn't even hit the floor. He didn't even hit the floor. He didn't even he hit, hit the floor. floor. Eight, eight times against Pettis. And still yeah, won. He, Pettis wobbled him. But Tony that wasn't dropped in the... Gaethje fight, but hey, if you try to do that to um, Tony Ferguson, you land heavy, heavy ass shot, but you throw nukes at Tony Ferguson, try to knock him out, that's not going to work still, out for you. And still, Matt. Tony dropped Gaethje. And Tony dropped Gaethje because Gaethje, he does have a good chin, you know, he, he get, he's been knocked out, but you know, his chin is not Tony Ferguson's chin. Nobody's chin is like Tony Ferguson's chin. Calvin not even Kader. Nate Diaz's chin. Not it, listen, Calvin Cater, look, they are, the, the, Calvin Cater, Nate Diaz, um, Nick Diaz, prime Nick Diaz, Tony Ortega. Ferguson, Ortega, they got, they're, they got zombie chin. You know, they're like zombies. If you ever watch the zombie show, don't be movie, you, you know, you hit them everywhere, they're not going out, until you hit the brain. And, you know, until you, you hit them 
like if Ngannou, like, you gotta hit him like Ngannou, and you gotta have that Francis Ngannou power to knock out Tony Ferguson, to knock out Nate Diaz, which I still believe they won't go out. Yeah, so that's that. You know, what was I, what was I talking about? We got off top, we got off topic a little bit, and uh, we were talking about um, Trevor Whitman. Um, you know, Trevor Whitman. You know, he he is the smartest coach. And I would love to train with Trevor Whitman. You know, this guy is a genius. He's like Elon Musk genius. He's like, you know, he's a genius in mixed martial arts. And that's what, that's what, what I love about him. This guy is a fucking genius. And he knows what he's talking about. And John Kavanaugh used to be that genius. You remember John Kavanaugh when Connor was in his prime, you know, beating up everybody left and right? Yeah. You remember that? That, that's the John Kavanaugh people need. That's the John Kavanaugh we need. Right now, it's a John Kavanaugh who's saying all the wrong things. He's a yes man right now. And I'm saying that with all the respect in the he world. Is, to John the new Kavanaugh. John Kavanaugh is the man who probably smokes drinks on weekends before fights. I don't know. I don't know. He definitely does. He might. I don't know. But hey, well listen, I'm not gonna take anything away from John Kavanaugh. He's the, he's got great fighters in his gym. He you know Conor McGregor being one of them. There are a lot of great fighters from SBG and Bellator, and they're doing great. You know James Gallagher, he's doing great. He's got a fight coming up, and you, you know James Gallagher. You've never heard of him. Oh, yeah, he's fighting the Bellator. Yeah, he fights the Bellator. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know he, he's got great fighters, and, you know, and he's got a couple great fighters that are great, that are doing great, doing good. And, you know, I think his coaching style doesn't match with everyone. You know, you've got to be a specific type of fighter to be able to be coached by John Kavanaugh. I believe that's the, that's the issue. You have to be this, like, Connor. But again, I don't know what's going on with Connor right now that, you know, in the last two fights, John wasn't able to, you know, show him the way that he's supposed to do things. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be sorted out, you know, Connor's Connor, you know, he all, he does what he wants. And John Cameron is a good coach. I'm not going to take anything away from John. Uh, but in this last couple of times that Cameron jo- coached somebody in UFC, you haven't done that good. So, yeah. yeah. Moving on. Let's move on from the su- subject. I, I don't want to shit on anybody. I got a lot of respect for those guys. But hey, let's move on. Uh, you said we got a fight card coming up. Who's fighting on this next card? This fight card coming up, Ali. Ali. Oh yeah. Uh. uh who we got? Hang on. Uh, I think Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. Is fighting. Headlining, uh, it, I think it's a, her first main event. She's you know great for her. You know she's a great fighter. Oh shit! The fight card starts real early. You look at the time. No, no. It's a really good card. When does it start in England? Six o'clock. That's great, bro. That's great. It starts like, it start, it's a good time, you know. It's a great time. And looking at the fights, up and comers, great fighters. Um, we got lightweights, we got straw weights, we got featherweights, heavyweights, middleweights, bantamweights. We got great fights. We don't have the biggest names in this court, but we got great fights, like starting from the main event. Uh, uh, Mackenzie Dern, Marina Rodriguez, great fighters coming off great wins. Uh, Jared Gooden, 
Randy Brown, that's a great fight. Tim Elliott is back in the is back, you know. Great that's a great fight, man. Phil Halls is back. I mean that's a great card and you know, I think who do you think takes the main event? Just the main event. We're just predicting the main event. Uh Mackenzie Dern. I love Mackenzie Dern. Uh, but I I also love Rodriguez. Rodriguez. But I do, I'm not sure who I'm going to go with. But I think it's going to be a great one. It's a great one. Um, next card. Uh, women are uh, headlining a lot of fight nights. That's great. I don't have anything to say about it. That's great. I don't have any problems with it. You know, as long as they give us good fights, I don't care, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, good, great. Pay point cards, you know, up until the two the pay per view. Everything looks great. I mean, UFC, they they're doing it, man. I mean, twenty twenty one. It's been a great year for fights. We had Conor McGregor fight twice. We had Israel Adesanya. We had great fight cards, and you know, I'm ex- I'm really excited for twenty twenty two. Twenty. 22 looks promising, man. It looks great. You know, we got a lot of great matchups coming up in 2022. And I hate saying 2022, man. Don't you hate it? Saying 2022? Yeah. Just a lot of twos. 2022. 2022. 222. 20. Oh, ah, shit. Well, um, looking at this. Fight cards. I mean, UFC is putting it out there, man. I mean, that's great. That's really great. I love it. But I, uh, I got a lot of rapid fire questions for you. You ready? A lot of hot takes. A lot of rapid fires. A lot of things that I want to ask you. Um, okay. So, um, hot take: Kamar Usman will be considered. A goat by the time he retires. No. Rapid fire, yes or no? I think he might. I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. Uh, moving on, Conor McGregor will be a champion soon. Yes or no? Yes. yes. I don't know. I have to see his next fight. How he, you know, how he does in his next fight. Against whoever it is. Uh, let me uh, uh, ask you this. Where did I put my... Where did I go? Um, John Jones is a normal fighter without steroids. What? John Jones is, an, is not that great fighter that we all know without steroids. No. What is that question? <laughs> Before he was taking steroids, I, he was to defend his lightweight belt against Chael Sonnen, David Shara. Um, I mean, that's a no, but hey, he's done a lot of shit over the years that overtakes that stuff. But hey, I agree to, I, I, I disagree. John Jones is a great fighter without steroids, but I don't know, man. His last couple fights, they were not that good. Uh, moving on uh, Dan Hooker has the tools to beat Islam Makhachev no I I think yes if he doesn't get tired with the wrestling of Islam Makhachev uh, let's see uh, Jake Paul this bitch came up again can be MMA fighters in boxing. Really has. No, like MMA fighters that are in the prime. Oh and, no, he's not beating an MMA fighter. He's not gonna beat anyone that who's in his prime or younger or the same yeah. size as him. Same size, so he weighs about one eighty-five. Middleweight. 
Even if I want one hit two hundred pounds, let's say he got. No, he doesn't. Let's do. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He weighed one ninety for his last fight. All right, one ninety pounds. Let's say he fights at one eighty five. He's not right. beating anyone. Uh, yeah, he is. I, I don't want to right. talk about it. Hey, listen. This is a rapid fire. Just let's just go. Away. I don't want to talk about Jake Paul. Um. Patty Pimblett versus Sugar Sean O'Malley is a super fight. No. Um, it would never happen. I mean, Patty, if if they both cut down to 145, it might happen. But, hey, it's I don't happen. know. Um, you know it. You know it's never going to happen. Um, I don't know, with the would Sean O'Malley say Where that are you reading he these doesn't want to fight? From? I don't know. It's on. I saved them. I took uh, you know a hot hot takes on Instagram like people post. I took a couple of screenshots and I'm just asking them. Um, moving on. What shit? Um, um, oh my God, I can't read this. It's too blurry. Uh, uh, don't you have a couple of rapid fire? No. Came and I didn't give you the list. I'm a fucking idiot. Um. Uh. <laughs> let me ask you this: Stepe Miocic will get his belt back in 2022. No. Uh, who will be the heavyweight champion in 2022? Cyril Gunn. Uh, will Chris Dawkins beat Derek Lewis? Yeah. Um, who, who, who's, uh, uh, no, no, who, not who, um, John, uh, George St. Pierre is higher in the GOAT ranking than John Jones. No. It's not in the question. You're so biased, you fanboy. It's not a que- it's not a question. Who's basically undefeated? Well, let's listen. Exactly. Uh, I'm done with the I'm done with this uh, rapid fire bullshit. I should have came in with a better question. Um, but yeah, you brought it. You said you don't think John. Uh, George St. Pierre oh, is a radio fighter. For you. Let me go on a rant for you, young man. Let me turn on the Dana White. Listen, you don't have to be undefeated to be the greatest fighter in the world. You don't have to. You don't have to be the greatest fighter in the world. You ha- If you avenge the loss, those losses, you can, you know, be the greatest fighter in the world. And right. George right. only lost to the best. What? What are you gonna say? When he beat Michael Bisping, yeah, was Michael Bisping in his prime? Michael Bisping was n- not in his prime, but he was on a great run. And Michael Bisping was fighting with one eye. If so, yeah. GSP fought Michael Bisping in 2016, who would have won? Dude, that was 2017, like a year later. Yeah, but he was in his prime in 2016. Um, listen, Michael was taking over. You know, GSP was getting tired, so we never know if that fight wasn't, you know, gone to the ground and GSP, you know, getting that submission. We don't know because what well, Michael was taking over, he was doing better. He was landing great shots. He hurt GSP on multiple occasions, but GSP came out and won. So it doesn't matter if you are winning. Winning or losing a fight, when you get in your hand, when you get your hand raised, you won. It doesn't matter. You can come from behind, you know, you're getting your ass kicked and you win the fight. It doesn't matter. You won. Win is a win. And yeah, and listen, George St. Pierre never tested positive for anything. Never was in a controversial head and run. Never tested positive for cocaine. Hang on, hang on. He did cheat. He did cheat. Did he cheat did against 
you gonna say BJ Penn? But when he rubbed that fastly down his back. Well, GSP was beating the crap out of BJ Penn, so that's not even a question. That's not even a good question. Go. Uh, the go is John Jones. Listen, if GSP is not the go, and Sensel was the go. All right. If John Jones beats the cha- heavyweight champion, he's go. No question. If listen, if John Jones comes out, beats the heavyweight champion, defends the title successfully, you just don't beat the champion and you know lose the, your next couple of fights to heavyweight, get knocked out left and right, and call yourself the goat. You know, you just don't. But if he comes out and you know deals with his issues. His issues that he's had, this disgusting thing that happened this time, this last couple of days, a couple of days ago. If if he can deal with that, if he can, you know, come out and do a great, you know, beat the champ, who, who whoever the, whoever the champion in 2022 beats him, defends the title successfully, and you know. Never test positive for anything in his life, you know. Gets, you know, fight, beats all his demons. I think he will be the goat, and I considered him the goat before he tested positive for steroids a couple of times when he was fight when he was supposed to fight DC. All right. He was my goat before he fought DC. Before he fought DC for the second time, where he tested positive on for steroids on. Multiple occasions. Yeah. So for right now, George St. Pierre is my GOAT. And if John Jones wants to be the GOAT, in my opinion, he needs to win the title, defend the title, show that he's a great champion, show that all this shitty things that he's doing outside the octagon is gone. He's not going to do this again. He will be the GOAT. But until then, GSP is my GOAT. Go. No question asked. Yeah. GSP is the goat from now. Alright, let's for wrap now. this thing up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. My mom texted me, I have to go pick her up. And yeah. Enjoy the podcast. Love, uh, you know, show us the love. Subscribe, like, do whatever you do. Share with your friends. If, you, if you're a fighter, want to come on the show, uh, just simply DM us on Instagram. The link is there uh, or contact us on Twitter or send us a send us an email if you got any ideas on what we should do for the next episode email Instagram Twitter is all there you know thank you guys for tuning in um Ollie say goodbye alright see ya see y'all later bye bye